Hey everybody and welcome to our Facebook and YouTube live stream. We are so excited that you guys are able to join us and Jennifer and I are here. Jennifer did not get a mic today because we are actually in transit. If you notice my background is not anything like it normally is, it's because we have in the last, uh, I guess, eight or nine days, how many COVID tests have we had, Jennifer? Like Too many. <laughs> four different COVID tests. So we are traveling and we are actually visiting our family. We're seeing our grandkids for the first time in over a year and a half. And we are in quarantine right now, which we want to be safe and we want to be responsible. So, uh, but the good news is, if you've noticed, I'm in quarantine, but look what who I'm in quarantine with. Not only my beautiful wife, but I have my 18 needle ZSK machine right behind me. So I'm a happy camper. And this is the first time we've got to spend some quality time together as well. So uh, where do we have people coming in from, Jennifer? All over the place, I think, right? Yes, quite a few all over. So we have Australia, Colorado, Pennsylvania, Mississippi. Um, again, quite a few from Florida, awesome. Louisiana. So Florida all people. over the globe. So that, that is great. We are excited that you guys got to join us. And it's not me solo today. I do have a very special guest. Uh, just so you guys know also that Beth and James, I think, are in the back. One is on Facebook, one's on YouTube. And of course, we are going to give away something free. But I do want to, I guess, get on with this and uh, invite my special guest. And our guest today is Daryl and Daryl Stevenson. And actually, let me just bring you on here, Daryl. And there we are. Hey, how are you? Hi there. Hey, okay. So, Daryl, you are our featured guest and you are super, super special. And sh do you want me to tell them why you're so special or do you want to dive right into that? Uh, let. Yeah, you can blow my heart. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. Well, Daryl is an incredibly talented artist, and I do want to emphasize the word artist because I feel I have a, a few creative bones in my body, and when it comes to stitches, I, I kind of can get around things that I can copy some stuff that other people have done. But I need, I guess, illustrators or people who I consider real artists to do what I do, and Daryl, you definitely fall into that category. I know that you uh, do caricatures and you do cartoons and you've done all kinds of stuff, but you also do do like illustrations and everything. So if you wouldn't mind, give me a little bit of background on your artwork and where you all started in that side of your passion. Well, I started as soon as I could hold a pencil, uh, basically. Uh, my father, who, who I really never lived with, was an artist. And uh, when I'd visit him, he'd get me creating stuff uh, he was uh, he ended his life as a stone carver but he started out as an illustrator painter so I got into it that way and uh, but my lo love has always been cartoony and so I've uh, been a freelance cartoonist uh, as long as as long as I can remember I've done other jobs and freelance cartooning was always a hobby or a, a, a second job but now it's a full-time job with the caricatures and stuff like that it's, which is uh, which is awesome when you get to yeah. do something for a living that you love doing yeah. it makes it makes everything a whole lot better doesn't it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for sure for sure cool so with regards to your caricatures i mean i i guess the other side of it is we kind of got connected because you started an embroidery journey and mm -hmm. uh, I found out, I guess, about, about you through one of our admins. I know that you emailed one of your caricatures that you did of me, and it just yeah. got kind of lost in the shuffle. But she said, uh, yeah. John, have you seen this? And I saw it, and I just went crazy. So tell me yeah. a little bit about your embroidery journey. Um, well, it was started uh, just before COVID. Um, I was uh, looking at – I'm always looking at different ways to – get different sources of income in. So I was doing, um, I bought a heat press and I was doing a little bit of a vinyl on uh, shirts and hats and stuff like that. And then I saw that hats were better when they were embroidered. So then I sort of thought about, well, I don't know if I want to get an embroidery machine. Um, maybe I'll just get some patches made. So then I contacted some companies and sent them some designs and asked them to see if they could do patches for me. And they all said it was too detailed. They couldn't do it. So then I contacted my sister. I said, can you do embroidery? And she says, yes. I said, okay, can you embroider me some patches? She goes, no, I just do hand embroidery. Oh. So <laughs> That might take a little while. <laughs> yeah, and then my mom found out. So then out of the blue, my mom bought me a 10-needle brother machine. Well, that's, just, that's a gift from a loving mother. That's an awesome yeah, way then, to start. Uh, from there, I started, and uh, 
as soon as I got it, actually, I picked it up probably a week after the COVID lockdown started. And um, so I had lots of time to learn how to do it. Lots of uh, watching YouTube, watching you on YouTube. And that's how we met on the uh, Patches Made Easy webinar. That's when I sent you that email. Awesome. 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 And you have turned into an incredible digitizer as well. I know that you are, I know you're a member of the, the Wilcom uh, Hatchfax group, but uh, mm -hmm. you've posted some of your designs there and some of your, your cartoons. So uh, I'm, I'm amazed because it is definitely a bonus if you have, I guess, some artistic ability, but you've definitely taken the uh, embroidery theory side of it and you're doing a great job. Thank you. It's, uh, it's a learning process. It's still, I got lots to learn, lots to learn. Well, I, I've been at this 37 years and counting, and I still feel that I'm, I'm learning and playing with different things. And that's, that's why you, you never get bored doing this, which is always yep. a good thing. So I, I'm just going to call up a slide real quick here and show this on screen for everybody, because I want to give uh, everybody an idea of just what you do. And this is actually the image that was sent to me, my caricature there. And I love how you got the little earring in there as well. So that, that was <laughs> awesome. Jennifer had to point that one out. And then, of course, uh, I, I had to ask you for, for you know, your caricature. So you sent it over to me and we turned them into stitches. And this is really what it's all about. And it's, it's kind of funny because I, I was uh, going to get my uh, son to bring this over, but we are in lockdown, so we're not allowed to do that you know, type of stuff, seeing people in close contact. But I remember when I was probably about eight or nine years old was when I got my first caricature done. And I think it was at the Canadian National Exhibition, CNE. You know, that's a big exhibition here in Toronto. But uh, people love caricatures, and they, they never get old. So That's for anyways. sure. Yeah, and, and you did, I guess, some, some things with regards to starting this up as a business where you were doing this, I guess, at live parties and stuff as well, right? Yeah, that was uh, that's what allowed me to become a full-time cartoonist is I always made money drawing cartoons, but I never made enough to make it my full-time job until I started doing live caricatures. So I draw live caricatures, uh, the old marker on paper ones, or I also mm -hmm. do uh, color digital caricatures on a big Cintiq um, and I, I project it onto a TV so the whole room can watch as it's being made. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that that allowed me, that was so popular, allowed me to uh, quit my other jobs and just become a full-time cartoonist. I, I can imagine in a live setting that uh, that just must, people must go crazy. I mean, it's just, uh, and I know oh, you're fast. Fun. I know you're fast yeah, as well. well which... you, you have to be. If you're not fast, you you're not going to get invited back. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't you can't be there with 30 people and only get two people done, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, I'm going to uh, just switch over to my PowerPoint here and I'm going to go through a few of them that we've done uh, to get ready for this because this really is the launch of caricature and we kind of did a soft launch. Uh, the um, people at Sch uh, Schmidt Needles and we had two really good celebrities or celebrities as I like to call them in the industry. And the first one being uh, Rita Farrow. Rita has been a good friend of mine and she is uh, kind of the, the I guess, uh, life or the embodiment of the Sewing and Stitchery Expo. If you've ever been there in Seattle, Washington area and you've met Rita, you know, she's the person who just runs around and keeps everybody together. So uh, they contacted us because uh, Schmidt recently did an article about the Deer's Legacy. And I told them about this idea that we had with the uh, Carica stitch. So they sent over their photo and I wanted to give everybody kind of a, an idea of the process because they'll give us a piece of artwork. And then obviously on the one side, you can see what Daryl does. And uh, how do you go about doing that, Daryl? Do you just look for uh, like the, the person's, you know, primary character or how, how do you bring them to life? When I do it in a live setting, I got to do it all in about two seconds. So I, I've got very good at watching people. Um, I'm the guy in the uh, mall who will watch everybody walk by. And as they're walking by, I'm drawing them in my head. So it's sort of instinctual. It's uh -huh. just something that happens. But um, what I do differently than a lot of character artists, and that doesn't mean they're, they're bad character artists, is I look for the, um, the best parts of someone's face to exaggerate or uh, not exaggerate. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't try to make it a mockery. So. I look at the best features of somebody and then I go from there. That's but I awesome. also look at mass. If you're looking at the mass for the top of the head, to the bottom of the head from the eyes, that's a quick way to determine how to draw a caricature. 
Yeah, that, that, the, the, eyes eyes are, the eyes are basically the, uh, the eyes are the most important part. Well, just like in digitizing, when I always talked about doing uh, animals in nature, I always said the life is in the eyes. And that is exactly what you do. I love how you capture the white in the eyes and the life in the eyes. And uh, yeah, every everyone that you've done, I think, including mine, uh, you sort of take the, uh, the, the person's photograph and make them better. So it's always puts a smile on people's face, which is, I guess, what you like to see as an artist. Yeah, a well-crafted caricature, I've heard said, is... Uh looks more like the person than the person themselves or how makes sense. <laughs> yeah i can kind of see that because in in my head uh, i still see myself probably at about 32 years old when i close my eyes but uh, when i wake up and look in the mirror it seems to be a totally different story so <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah but anyways that that was awesome and, and there i did turn it from your caricature into stitches which is kind of probably, I'm guessing, almost the same type of process because I did see a little video. And for you guys who want to see, I guess, our, our intro video, I know that James and Beth are going to put up a link to the character stitch page. And there's a video there that shows, I guess, some some of the character stitches in action, meaning that giving them to, uh, to people is really the... Uh, the joyful part of it and seeing the reactions that you get from people, whether it's a, a gift or you know something for a loved one. And I mean, we're just scratching the surface here because there's so many ideas that we could come up with. But when I go to digitize these, I'm looking at blending kind of the threads together to create the same type of shading. And uh, to be honest, the most important part of the design for me is also trying to capture the life in the eyes. So that's uh, it's really cool. I, I think we, we make a we make a great couple. I think. Yes. <laughs> so, Rita's uh, got the twinkle in her eye. Yeah, Rita's Rita's got the twinkle in her eye, mm -hmm. and this is our good friend Rhonda Pierce. And Rhonda is actually the uh, I guess the what would you call her the the icon or the figure behind the Schmetz Neil. If you've ever watched any of the uh, I guess YouTube's where people anybody in the industry talks about needles, she's always there, kind of covering you know, the different types of needles, what they're used for, all that. But she also provided one, and there's the transition from, I guess, life to stitches and through the caricatures. And then we, uh, of course, have uh, Linda. Linda is, uh, I guess, an incredible moderator that we have within our Wilcom Hatchback groups. So a lot of you probably know Linda well, but we, of course, had to get her done. Linda's tips. Yeah, Linda's tips, and she has some new videos that we've put out recently, educational videos. So everybody who wanted to have one done within our, our admins, we got them done as well. There's Ina, and you guys might recognize her as well. And so far, everybody has loved their Karaka stitches. And we were, uh, you know, I don't know how they've given them to their loved ones, but I'm sure there's that they'll Christine. be smart. Yeah, there's Christine for us. Uh, this is, besides my wife and my daughter and my mother and my grandmother, this is the other lady in my life. This is Daisy. So she <laughs> is, uh, and of course, I, I appreciate that because I, I want people to know that we just don't do people, but you also, uh, animals is one of your passions, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I love drawing animals. I have yeah. two, two dogs myself and uh, no grandkids yet, though. No grandkids, uh, grand doggies, maybe. Kids haven't given me grandkids yet, but hopefully yeah. soon. That's that's a little so hint. If you if you tell them to yeah. watch, we put a little hint out there. <laughs> I hint awesome. all the time. Okay. Yeah, I know. I love drawing. I love drawing dogs and uh, cats. Okay, so cats. So we aren't specifically just dogs. We will do cats as well. And I guess if you have a pet rabbit or a gerbil or anything you want, I guess we can pretty much uh, try to convert that into a carcass stitch as well. So there is kind of two different ways that we uh, decided to do this. And one of the things that Daryl and I have kind of been working on is how do we, I guess, transition something from being done into a caricature, which is drawn, because it is, you know, it's, it's all custom done. I mean, this does take time and it's not like a stock design, which we have a ton of where you're, you know, selling them over and over again. This is for a specific person. So it has to be drawn manually and then they have to be digitized manually. So when you um, get to that page that explains a little bit about how we do this, we do have two different ways. One is where you can get a single portrait done and that is usually within a five inch height or width. 
I, I sort of limit it one direction or the other. And if you want a single animal done, it will fall into that five by five category. If you want to have a you know single, I guess, portrait of somebody done, it falls into that category. But then we also, and actually there's my son, Jesse, and he gave this to his, his lovely girlfriend. So, and I put a smile, I think she's on the video as well. Uh, this one also is James, my other son, and this one is where we do have a little bit of a difference because we did do James twice. Uh, the first one you did uh, as his portrait, and that one we do at a five-inch height. And just so you know, Daryl, we kind of renamed this in our family. What did we What did we call this one? James's? Yeah, James's. Okay. We, my, my son has decided to grow very long hair during COVID. And I think he started right around when COVID did, but uh, we have he renamed him. Yeah, yeah, he's going to donate it eventually. So I guess it's got to get longer because it doesn't have to be a certain length. Mm -hmm. or, okay. But anyways, um, we call him James's now, but we also, uh, James did grow up in Costa Rica for quite a few years and he loves surfing and skateboarding. So we did have him with a I guess a body as well and you of course did a him on a, on a surfboard so that's the other side of what daryl and i are offering is it is either just sort of a portrait or if you want your dog done but if you want you can add i guess pretty much anything underneath of that is that correct yes i can draw okay. anything yeah pre so pretty much anything now i do <laughs> want to put a little i guess uh, uh a note here because we do, and I think I did have Jesse put this on the order page, we do kind of reserve the right that we don't want to have you or us digitizing anything that is in any way, uh, I guess, vulgar or offensive to anybody. So we do kind of draw the limits on, you know, things that might be insulting. And of course, we do have to be respectful of, I guess, licensed uh, items as well. So with regards to sports teams and things like that, and if you, you know, Mickey Mouse and you know Spider Man and I know this is a personalized item uh, that if you were having it just drawn it would be drawn but because we're digitizing it in a digital format somebody could ask for something to be done and then edit out the logo of whatever it was and potentially use that or resell it and we just want to make sure that we you know stay within the guidelines and we don't you know cross over into anything that would get us or you into trouble. And uh, that's, I think, pretty fair, right, Daryl? We, we don't want to we don't want to do stuff that is going to infringe on copyrights. Oh, definitely. Um, but but having said that, the drawings that you get, you can do anything with. Yes, definitely. Yes. Yeah, they, they are your property. I, yeah, it's their property. Yeah. So that, that becomes if yours. Or for, if they want to yeah. use it for a Facebook profile or if they want to use it for a greeting card or something. Um, same with the embroidery, I'm sure, but uh, for the drawings, yeah, it's all theirs. It's yeah. It's, it's and and I, I think we're in agreement on this, Daryl. We, we definitely understand that if somebody uh, you know loves their motorcycle and wants to have a caricature of them on their their motorcycle, uh, that that's fine. I mean, you don't have a problem kind of drawing that, and I don't have a problem digitizing it. But I can't put the words Harley across the side of it or Harley Davidson logo. I mean, that's that's kind of just where we we draw the the line is. We can draw the image of it, but we can't draw, I guess, any of the licensed parts of it. Or if, you're, if your grandson loves basketball, we can have him with a basketball and a jersey, but we can't put uh, you know, the Raptors on there as far as the team is concerned. So, right. Cool. And uh, this would also be one that we consider kind of a two-parter. I did this one for my neighbor. Actually, his name is Frankie, and he loves his dog, Roxy. And if you haven't watched that video, you got to go on to our – caricature page and watch it because I did not expect the reaction that we got. He got very emotional with me and uh, he just loves his dog. So yeah, that, that, that was the best part of that video. That yeah. Funny. Yeah. Just unbelievable. I, I didn't expect that because I went down to him and I asked him if I could just get a, a picture because you and I you know, talked about it when we were kind of, this has been in development for months now and we were kind of talking about what we were going to do and the guidelines and you know, having people with their pets or having couples, or we have actually, even in our, our, I guess, soft launch where we really, this is our first official announcement, but we've already got, you know, quite a few orders that have come in, but people are asking for things for uh, wedding anniversaries and all that kind of stuff. And it is just one of those, you know, things, it, it immortalizes an, an occasion. 
So that's mm -hmm. what do you get for somebody who has everything? Yeah, that's true. I mean, what do you get for somebody who has everything? And this is yes. it. <laughs> and this was done for uh, Leanne in our office. If you've ever talked to Leanne, she is the awesome, awesome person who answers our phone and answers all of the questions. And uh, this is her daughter and her son-in-law, and they did one of their favorite uh, pictures. I guess it's an engagement picture. And that's on the video as well, where they gave to her and then uh, her son-in-law. And uh, I just I just love seeing the smiles. And that's actually one of my biggest hopes is that uh, we do get some feedback from you guys as we do these. And if you want to film them and if you give us permission, uh, we'd love to see the responses that your your family and your kids get from from all of this. So it's pretty cool. And then, of course, uh, this is my grandson, Noah. And and. Uh, Daryl made him into a superhero, and we did not use the Superman logo. We put the Super Noah logo in there, which is mm -hmm. awesome. And then my other uh, grandson, Eli, and he was a little cowboy. So just gives <laughs> a, a whole world of possibilities of things that people can do with these. Now, what's some of the craziest stuff you've ever done so far, Daryl, that you can talk about live on camera? <laughs> uh, I, uh, I drew caricatures at... Um Oh, uh, what do you call that when uh, uh, bridesmaids party? Okay, <laughs> enough said. <laughs> it's interesting. I can't really, I can't really go into it. Um, but uh, the craziest things I've drawn. Oh, um, well, it's, it's hard. It's hard to pinpoint one thing. But what what people get from me is um, a caricature for a gift, um, and they usually have about. You know, anywhere from one to 20 different hobbies or items and then I combine those all into one drawing um, th this is not the embroidery side this is just the the drawing right. side and um, the reactions I get from these things I mean I do the drawings about this big when they're printed up and you know I get videos from uh, clients showing their reactions and stuff like that when they give them as gifts and it, it is the gift for everybody that you know has everything they need it's the person you don't know what to get a gift for you get them a caricature yeah for sure um, but I can't think of anything that's crazy other than the things I can't really talk about on camera. <laughs> well, and, and talking about that, I, I know that on our site to make it easy, we've kind of limited it to, you know, one head as, you know, one yeah. price. And then we have the other where you can have a body with a head or two different people beside each other. Uh, I, I guess we could potentially do things that are bigger too, but that would definitely fall into a customized Custom. order. Yeah, definitely custom. And number one, you'd need to first of all uh, get a machine like this to run up, or any. I mean, you have a you have a pretty big field area on your ten needle machine as well. But obviously, when you're talking about bigger designs, you need bigger hoops. So mm -hmm. I think I think anything's possible. But uh, keep in mind, uh, digitizing all of this stuff and drawing it. It is a process, and uh, I, I'm kind of laying that out because. We had kind of thought if we kind of launched this and we did put on our website that we are, you know, basically doing the first 50 orders that have come in. I, I know for a fact after this live, we're going to surpass that. But I just want people to know that if you do order these, please, please, please be patient with us because we do have approximately a two week lead time from the time that uh, Daryl draws these. And uh, I, I have to apologize because I know you're on vacation right now, aren't you, Daryl? <laughs> yeah, I'm on uh, Gabriel Island. Awesome. In British in, Columbia. Right? In British Columbia, which is a beautiful, beautiful area. And you live in BC, right? So it's Yes, just, I live just outside of Vancouver. Yeah, so it's a beautiful, beautiful area. So I have to apologize because I know you've been drawing a few Karaka stitches and getting them to me to start yep. doing so. Uh, but what else are you going to his wife. Yeah, <laughs> All right. I guess I should apologize to your wife. She's but, on the beach. Uh, she's on the beach out right now reading her book. Okay, so she's bring, happy. bring down a bottle of wine after we're done here. Okay, so okay, so you know how to keep your wife. You you've been married for a little while then. <laughs> yeah, 33 coming up 34 years now. Awesome. That is awesome. Well, you have to thank her, but uh, I do want to let you guys know that if we do get bombarded with orders, we'll, we'll do our best when we put the orders through to let you know approximately how long it will take. Because uh, if there's a ton of orders that come in, this could be you know a two, three, or four week wait time 
to actually get them back to you just because they are all custom done. I can't emphasize that enough, but uh, I decided to take on this project, number one, because it's, you know, it's kind of unique and it uh, hopefully people like it and we can make a bit of money. Mm -hmm. But I do think that this is a, a really fun project for me as well. And I, I think you're in that same boat, right? Yep. Oh, yeah, definitely. So. I love new things. Yeah, and, and likewise, please you know, let us know your reactions. Uh, if you get the stitch outs done, please let them, uh, you know, post them within our group so we can see what they look like. Uh, from the digitizing side of it, I am trying my very, very best to digitize the designs, uh, and I've created a recipe specifically for this, for t-shirt material, for stretchier t-shirt material, because I do realize that a lot of people might put these on t-shirts as gifts for people. And, and I do have, this is not going to get, don't worry, this isn't like your, uh, your party that you were doing the drawings at. So don't get concerned right now. <laughs> but I did, I did do my shirt here and I did the caricature that you did for me on a t-shirt. Oh, cool. Yeah. And That's if you cool. can't read it, it says, not the tractor. Get it, John Deere? Not, okay. <laughs> not oh, the tractor. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've told people my name's John Deere, and it's always, oh, the tractor. Oh, no, 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 not the tractor. So I did my shirt that says not the tractor with my caricature on it. And, of course, you know, I have all my stitch outs, but I am trying to do all of these so that they are still, you know, soft. But when you run them on materials that are going to be like for T-shirts, um, there might be a few extra color changes in the ones that I'm doing, meaning that I'm trying to do the filled areas and then uh, do the outlines as quickly as possible so they register correctly. And uh, just, you know, trying to take the worst possible scenario so that they run as well as possible. Now, keep in mind, when you run on T-shirts, you want to make sure that you hoop them properly and that you use the right stabilizers. That's going to be really important because when you do designs with full fronts on T-shirts, you can get, you know, I guess, puckering and registration problems and all kinds of stuff that happens. So we will try our best to help you through that as well. But we do want to give away a couple of Kerka stitch. So here's what we're going to do. If you type in right now, and it's not the first person, we're going to choose one person out of YouTube and one person from Facebook. If you type in Kerka stitch and uh, just, you know, type that in Kerka stitch exactly as you see it there, or I want a Kerka stitch or, you know, stitch me a Kerka stitch or just anything like that. For the next couple of minutes, just type that in and we're going to randomly choose two people that we are going to do a character stitch for, one from YouTube and one from Facebook. We do have a few questions when you're okay. ready. Sure, I think we're ready for questions and hopefully some of these are for Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> Would this well, I have a question. be like photo stitch? Okay, hold on. Daryl has a question first. Go ahead, Daryl. Um, you get the 5x5 five five head. Are you able to enlarge that if you have a bigger hoop? Um, uh, and would, it be, would it be better to do that if you had the native EMB file? That is a great question. And I just want people to know that what we've done first off before we answer the other questions is when you order the Carica stitch, you're not just getting the stitch file, which we will give you in the EMB format. And if you're not familiar with EMB, it is the native format to the Hatch software or the Wilcom software. It's, uh, it is really sizable, which means that you can do incredible things with it. But we are also asking you which file format you want for the brand and machine that you own. So if you have a, a Viking, you want VP3, or if you want a PES file, we are going to send you the specific file that you want for your machine, as well as the EMB file. Now, if you do have the Hatch software and you get the EMB file from us and you have that five inch design and want to make it eight or nine inches, then yes, you probably very easily could adjust those files and have them run much bigger, but only with the EMB file format, because you still might need to go in and do a little bit of tweaking, you know, like go in and change some, some stitch types. If they get too long and they start breaking up, you might want to splice them or change a satin to a fill. But uh, yes, you can do that. The other great thing is we're not just giving you the, uh, the embroidery file and the EMB file. We're also giving you the original Kerica Stitch artwork, right? So they can print this out as well. So that's uh, really cool. You're getting everything all in one. So did that answer your question, Daryl? Yes. <laughs> okay, Thank awesome. You. No problem. Uh, and we have some other questions. 
No, I haven't been able to hear what Daryl has said. So um, Angel is asking, can they be resized in hatch? That's what we just talked about. Yes, Angel, you can resize them in hatch. Okay. Would this be similar to photo stitch? Uh, not really. Uh, photo stitch, and depending on the software that you own, some photo stitch programs do work better than others. And they will give you kind of a almost a, a stipple rendition of a design. The software goes in and starts looking at the uh, colors, uh, how many colors it sees, and you can minimize the amount of colors, and then it will go in there and randomly create things. This is not like Photo Stitch, where it's trying to replicate the photos. These are actually, first off, uh, caricaturized by Daryl, which means that he's using his incredible talent to turn that person into a you know, caricature or cartoon-like figure. And then these are manually digitized. So you will get, in my opinion, better running designs than a Photo Stitch designs. They have a tendency to be very stitch intensive and have a ton of trims in them. So they are different. Okay, next question. Uh, do we get the drawing as well as the embroidery file? Yes, Tell you do. Asked. Yep, you get the drawing as well as the embroidery file. Those will be both sent to you so you can print them out and you can see some. Yes, Daryl. Um, yeah, I believe uh, we um, are offering them as a PNG format yes. with uh, a transparent background. So cool. you can use that in any software program um, that you want. Awesome. And, and uh, I guess if you do uh, in the resolution, I know they're not gigantic, but the resolution is, is higher they're as pretty, well. They're very high res. Yeah. Very so they're high res. High res. yeah they, they run about uh, probably anywhere from two to 10 megabytes per uh, drawing. Okay. So, and I guess in reality, if you are as part of your hobby doing, you know, I guess, uh, direct to garment printing, or if you're doing mm -hmm. transfers or stuff, you could definitely use that and create oh, a yeah. transfer. And you can enlarge it and enlarge it and use it on a t-shirt as, uh, with, uh, you know, sublimation or, uh, you know, print on vinyl. Yeah, for sure. So we're talking like just we're, we're talking a gift basket for occasions, not just embroidery, but you can do, you know, little stickers and magnets, whatever you want. Jennifer. Uh -huh. How is Daryl with different ethnic backgrounds? Any issues or all good? What's up? Were you, uh, Jennifer asked, how are you with different uh, ethnic backgrounds? Are you OK? Like, are you able to, um, you know, yes, I'm guessing. I'm, yeah, yeah it, uh, my, my life as a caricature artist, I, I do a lot of Indian weddings, Asian weddings, um, all the whole gamut. And I'm doing all the different uh, uh, custom uh, uh, what do you call um, dresses and stuff like that? So yeah, I'm very very uh, knowledgeable in the customs and awesome. I, I know when we first started talking back and forth, and you you told me a little bit because yeah, I mean obviously you've been doing this since you could hold a pencil, so uh, yeah. you have a very extensive library of things that you've done, and I mean it's it's huge. Yeah, I can't remember the exact number you had said, but you have a ton of reference stuff that you've drawn over the yes. years. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Next question. Next question is, um, for something that's not posted on the website for pricing, do they just email in? Somebody's asking about two people with a cat. Okay. So yeah, if you, uh, just so you guys know, and Daryl, I don't know if you could hear Jennifer either, but if you do have something that falls outside of the guidelines that we've posted on the website, so if you want to have two people and a cat or, you know, two dogs and their owners or something that is a little bit larger, uh, there we will handle that on a, I guess, a one-on-one -on -one basis because I will need to, uh, Daryl, you're not doing this out of the, I know you love what you do, but this is a business and, you know, mm -hmm. you can't draw 15 characters for the same price as you would draw one. I, I totally understand that because I can't digitize them either. So mm -hmm. anything that requires more uh, detail just send us an image, and the first thing I'll do is send it to Daryl to get a quote from him as far as the artwork, and then we'll have to assess the digitizing. Uh, keep in mind, too, I, I am making sure that all of these samples are proofed on our machine, so we have to run a sample on our machine as well. So there's quite a bit that goes into this process, but if you do talk about getting really, I guess, big scenes done or something like that, yes, it can be done, but we also need to know what your maximum hoop size will be. 
Because if you only have a five by seven hoop and you have a, you know, uh, a brother 660 or something like that, uh, you can only fit so much detail into that hoop size. So mm -hmm. there might be some limitations there. Kathy's asking, would this be suitable for black and white renditions? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Which I, I know. As far as the characters go, the drawings go, I can do grayscale, black and white colors. Okay. Cool, because I think we did just have one that came in, and I don't know if Leanne sent you this, Daryl, where it was yeah, for a, a 50th a wedding, anniversary. A wedding photo, an older wedding photo yeah. for an anniversary present. Yeah, no, I, as long as you can digitize black and white, I can draw black and white. Yeah, it's all it's all thread, and you know that, that's why you do need all 586 colors of thread so that you can <laughs> blend, you can blend all the grays and the whites and everything together. So yeah, 400 I can, shorts. <laughs> yeah so so yes uh, if daryl uh, how about we say it this way if if daryl can draw it i can digitize it mm, we'll then i can one. draw anything okay then i guess i can digitize anything <laughs> except newborns okay actually that that is a good point because and don't get me wrong because i mean every newborn is just the most precious gift from god and i know that beautiful thing in the world. most beautiful thing in the world but they don't come out with a lot of character <laughs> No, it, it it they they basically look all the same. It's rare to have a newborn not look like any other newborn. Three months probably is about the best, the earliest you want to try and do a drawing of, because the character is just starting to come through. Yeah, yeah. When they start ooing and smiling and doing all that mm -hmm. wonderful stuff, and yeah, so de definitely, I would I would agree with that. Because actually, it might be. You know what? We could say, Daryl, that we could do newborns and we just digitize and draw one of them and it's good for everybody. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just okay. change the hair color, eye color. That's right. Uh, Jennifer? Daryl, how are you if somebody has uh, something specific that they want added to or um, I guess more pronounced within a drawing? So if somebody wants a feature more pronounced or? Yes. Something? So yeah, I guess if yeah, I can I can uh, what I like to call my drawings are uh, I like to call my drawings cartoon portraits, and I try to emphasize the best part of people's faces. But if you want a funny drawing, more exaggerated, um, then yes, I can do that. I just have it has to be asked. I don't know how they go through the ordering process, if they have the ability to ask for different things. Okay. Yeah, I will. I will actually bring that up with Jesse. Jesse is upstairs, actually working on uh, developments with our web team right now as we speak. But I'll ask Jesse if there is right now currently, or if we can put in a notes feature on the order, you know, uh, part of it, where we can sort of ask about you know special requests, meaning that if somebody wants something either emphasized or unemphasized, you know, then we can sort of sort of be sensitive to that as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Can these be sewn on a home sewing machine? Can these be home? Yes, they can. They can be sewn on any home embroidery machine that has the ability to read an embroidery file. So yes, uh, pretty much any make or model or brand we do and can write a format for you. Not a problem. Do you send back the photo uh, or how do they send you the photo? Uh, during the order ordering process, if you do go to the page, that there should be a link there right now if you're interested in finding out more. Uh, make sure you watch that cute little video. It's only a couple minutes long and it'll show you some of the work we've done so far. But when you get into the order process, it actually uh, does uh, give you, after you order, it gives you instructions right away where to email your uh, photograph to. And based on some of the specs that you gave us, Daryl, we sort of have some, I guess, requirements. Do you want to run through, through those real quick as far as what types of photos to submit and what not to submit? Yeah. Um, basically, you got to you look at the photo. When it's somebody you know, um, a blurry photo might look okay because your brain fills in all the information. But me looking at the same photo, it's just a blurry photo. So the clearer the photo, the better the drawing is going to be. I can work from a blurry photo for the most part, but a clear photo will get the best results. Cool. Um, and uh, like avoid group photos because if you send a group photo and you say the third guy from the left, well, that picture is going to be so pixelated I cannot use it. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes I get pictures with people with their hands in front of their faces. Those don't work. Um, 
How about lighting? Is, is lighting important? Uh, lighting, yeah. Uh, good, good lighting. Like your lighting is better than my lighting right now because I got too much shade on one side of the face. Um, but um, nice and clear, good lighting, a good expression. Um, because if you send me a picture of them with no smile and you ask me to draw them smiling, I don't know what they look like smiling. Smiling, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because people's faces change so much when they smile or mm -hmm. frown or make a, a goofy face. So I need to have the expression that you want in the drawing within the photograph. And um, that's basically about it. There's been some back and forth between Leanne and myself. She sent me a couple saying, is this clear enough? And I said, no, I need a better picture. And then another one that was slightly blurry. And I told her, yeah, I can work with that. Okay. So, but the clearer the picture, the better the drawing, the better the embroidery. Yeah, and, and to be honest, as far as digitizing, you know, when we did do custom digitizing for decades, that was basically the same rule of thumb. It's kind of like garbage in, garbage out. You know, I mean, you work with what you are given. And I remember getting, you know, uh, corporate logos and somebody would come in and hand me a golf ball with a corporate logo on a golf ball. Now, <laughs> it's really, really hard to make sense of what's going on. You know, I mean, it's got to be, you know, flat and all that. Good stuff. And, you know, napkins that have been, you know, used and then given to you afterward. I mean, you just you got to try to have a little bit of common sense with the best possible image you can provide. I give I you the best outcome. Yeah, I've got sent a picture once of uh, these two grandkids this lady wanted drawn, and they're from the their back heads. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, I guess you got the back of their heads back. <laughs> well, no, no. I, I said, please send more pictures. Pictures. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But that, that'll just help us in the process as well. So definitely. Jennifer? Yep. Are they able to give multiple pictures to be combined into a group picture? Uh, for the end result, so an individual to make a complete family? I, I would, uh, if I could answer my answer to that, and then you tell me the right answer, Daryl, but I would sure. say personally it would be best for us if you provide an accurate picture of what you want represented, but not a group of pictures to be combined into one, because that will just take Daryl a lot longer to do the job. But you, you answer it now, Daryl. <laughs> it's fine. I do that all the time. Um, okay. As long as the pictures look the same as far as brightness, um, I can combine. Like uh, I get pictures of couples all the time, and I get a really good picture of the husband and a really good picture of the wife, but I can never get one combined together. Okay. It's best to have it together because then the lighting will all be the same, but I can work from separate photos and put them together. Okay, can, can I maybe put a limit though on on like can we say uh, up to five photos? I just I just don't want you having to go through one hundred and twenty seven. Oh, no, no, I don't. I don't want a whole bunch of different photos um, yeah. of people. I just want you know, use this photo of my husband, use this photo of me, yeah, and combine it together into one portrait. Yeah, and if you, if you want, you could have some real fun. Like uh, for the wives there, you could have you when you first got married thirty five years ago, and have your husband in present day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Jennifer didn't find that funny. But anyway, go ahead, Jen. Uh, <laughs> well, the wives never age anyway. Would it be helpful if Daryl had more than one picture to work from? Yes, that, that would be helpful. Okay. If, uh, again, yeah, if, yeah, two pictures would be good, but if it's one really clear picture and you know it looks exactly like the person, that's fine. Okay. Um, but yeah, two different ones because sometimes I'll get a better look at the eyes in one picture than I will in the other. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Any other questions, Jennifer? Yes. What about thread colors? Do you give suggestions with thread colors? Uh, to make it easy, this is on my side of it with regards to thread colors. Uh, we do use the Madeira uh, Poly Thread. So we use the Madeira Thread brand as the main thread choice. And that is the PDF that I will give you using Madeira. And then within your software, you should hopefully, I know Hatch does allow you to do this, but you can kind of uh, find the closest match in the selection of hundreds and thousands of different shades and different brands. It would be impossible for me to do a care, I guess, uh, a digitizing and assign uh, colors in colors that the person has specifically. So we will use Madeira and then you can try to match them as close as possible. Well, I, I stitched out a couple a of, uh, sorry, go ahead, Daryl. I stitched out a couple of the ones you sent me, specifically the one of myself and uh, one of the, um, that little child in the, uh, the uh, outfit. And, uh, 
I use the cord uh, threads and I was able to match up. It was no problems. Awesome. Yeah. And I do suggest if you start doing a lot of these, I, I did actually uh, bring in for my, my kids because they're the ones running a lot of the samples now, uh, a lot of uh, flesh tones and various colors, you know, for, for different ethnic groups. And there it is really handy to have uh, quite a few tones or shades for flesh tones because that can make or break the design. Go ahead, Jen. If you send in a picture of a couple, could the two people theoretically be stitched separately later as well? Uh, I think they probably could. I, for me, if I'm if I'm personally digitizing a photo that Daryl has given me artwork where the people are ones overlapping the other, uh, and they have some type of you know garment on or something, if you would separate them, it might look like one of them was finished and one of them maybe wasn't 100% finished. So. There might be some limitations, but yeah, definitely you could separate the two faces or the two heads and maybe just have the neck. So you should be able to order or two separate single portraits and yeah. then you can combine them on your uh, in a hatch if you want or on your machine. That's true. And they, I guess with hatch, there is a remove overlap feature. So if you did you know, do two separate portraits, getting two separate portraits is the same price as doing one double so to speak. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to do them as two separates and then do exactly what Daryl said, I, th I think, uh, I think Daryl's giving better answers than I am. So I'm going to let Daryl answer the next one again. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay. As somebody is asking, uh, is it the artist's final interpretation? That one? Yes. Is it the, uh, is it the artist's final interpretation? For, for the, I would say for the price range, it's that it's there. It is. Mm. Um, I, I do my best to make it look great and look at, make it look like the photograph. When I work at my studio on my own commissions, if somebody wants something changed, well, then that's an extra charge. Yeah. And it probably, that would be an extra charge. And that's the same thing in the, the digitizing side of it as well. Generally, when somebody would bring us a logo and we digitize it, if we followed the, you know, I guess the guidelines and then afterwards they wanted to have the design edited, we would charge an editing fee. So, uh, yeah, I, I think for the price point, like Daryl said, you pretty much have to trust that he's an incredible artist and that I'm a half decent digitizer and we'll do our very best to make it look as good as possible. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty much going to be what we give you. Okay. Uh, is this a one and done offer or will the service be available in the future? Uh, we're, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that we uh, get along for many years to come, Daryl. I think this could be a, a fun, <laughs> fun thing for us to do. So I don't think this is a one and done thing. Uh, as long as I'm able to still hold a digitizing pen, I'll keep doing what I do. How about you? I got my pen. Okay. So, okay. There. Actually, oh, I got to go to this side. If we join our pen. Thank you. There it is. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's my uh, digital. That's my digital pen. Okay, me too. So we're both using digital technology, which is awesome. Yeah, we both use the same products. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that uh, this is the the beginning of a wonderful relationship, and God willing, uh, Daryl and I will be providing the service for hopefully years to come. I'm never going to retire. <laughs> <laughs> me either. Uh, Jennifer can't hear anything we're saying, so this is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> And okay, uh, do you want me to play the video? Whatever you would like. I okay. think for all of our questions are. Okay. All of our all of our questions are pretty much answered. So we do have to announce a winner. I, I actually I was thinking about playing the little video we did, but it's uh, it's a couple minutes long, and some people might have already seen it. So I know that uh, Beth and James have put up the link. Even if you're not interested in purchasing the Kerka Stitch. Uh, you know, check out the page and check out the video because it is a lot of fun. I just I love seeing the reactions from people. Mm -hmm. But we are going to give away a couple of Carica stitches, and we have two winners. And Jennifer is going to grab the names right now. Okay, on Facebook, the winner is Sue Feinberg Edberg. So that was Sue Feinberg. Edberg. Edberg, and that is for Facebook. Yes. Awesome. Congratulations, Sue. Congratulations. If you want to message into contact at embroiderylegacy.com. 
Okay, so just uh, send us an email, contact at embroiderylegacy.com, and we will get you all set up. And for YouTube? YouTube, the name I have is Arnold Nell. So congratulations, Arnold. If you as well can email into contact at embroiderylegacy.com. Okay, and that was Arnold Nell? No, N-E-L-L. N-E-L-L. So again, contact us as well at the contact at Embroidery Legacy. And you guys are getting two free Kerka Stitch designs. And that's a single portrait, look, by the way. I'll look for those names and uh, do extra special. Oh, awesome. Okay. Well, th this has been a ton of fun. And I appreciate you, Daryl, taking time out of your, your holiday. And uh, did you have anything else you wanted to, to add? Thanks so much. No, no, I'm I'm really looking forward to this. I've been uh, the wife and I have been talking about this for a couple months now. Quite excited. Awesome, awesome. Well, I, I'm excited too. It seems like we've been working on this for a, a long, long time. So it's it's nice to see it finally come underway, and that page is there. Jen is telling me that I should play the video right at the end. So <laughs> I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you go. And I have a couple of other announcements, but. Uh, have a great rest of your holiday. Go join your wife on the beach with that bottle of wine, and uh, you know, have a, have a great one. We appreciate you joining us. Thank okay, you thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Awesome. Okay, so I had a couple more things to share with you guys, and then we will wrap it up. I'll do the video at the very end. If there's any other questions, just let Jennifer know. And uh, just let me go right over here back to. This one, here we go. Okay, so there is a couple other things that we have. Just so you guys know, we are having a Christmas in July sale on our Christmas designs. So they are 51% off, which means they're $1.95 each. And I know we have over a 1,000 Christmas designs available on our site. So if you're doing any Christmas in July projects, it is a great uh, way to get some of those things uh, going at a very reasonable price. Uh, the other thing I did want to announce, is that uh, Linda Rayburn, you guys all know Linda if you're a member of our uh, Wilcom Hatch Facts Embroidery Group. Uh, she has uh, done a bunch of videos for us and we released the first video, actually I guess the first two were released, one which was uh, free for everybody. Uh, then she had her second video and this is her third one and this is a quilted mug rug. And keep in mind that these are paid lessons but they are full videos with tutorials and everything. And you do get included the Quilters Collection for FlexiFill ESA file. So whenever we're doing these videos, which are full-length tutorial lessons, you do get the ESA file with it, which is normally a $10 value. So it is a great deal. If you already do own that particular ESA file, don't worry. We will give you a credit so that you can swap it out for another one. So uh, I think Linda's new lesson might be up right now if not it'll be available first thing in the morning so that will be there as links well links are being posted okay links are being posted right now so my team jesse dear you guys are awesome so uh, our digitizing beginners workshop we are uh, doing a second one we just did our first one maybe a month ago and the second one is scheduled for september the 18th at uh, 4 p.m. We're kind of making things a little bit different this time. So if you do want to check out that uh, link for there as well, this will give you a sort of a acceler accelerated learning experience if you want to learn to digitize or if you want to give it a test drive and see if it's something that's for you. So it's a great way to get your feet wet. Uh, our premium Outback collection is still for sale. This was a design bundle where I did 30 artistic designs in three different sizes. I did uh, six deluxe designs. I did eight bonus background designs and all of that was for one low price. And of course, if you want to try our 30 day hatch trial, it is always free and we do have our challenge. So if you wanna give hatch a try, give digitizing a try and not need to invest anything, it is a great resource as well. Now, uh, before we end, is there any other questions, Jennifer? I'm going to bring up the other little video and I'll just play it through real quick. No questions, I can see it. No moment. questions, okay. Just give me one second, sorry about this, guys. And I'm gonna close that stream there. It's nice to put a face to the name. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah. Daryl is an awesome guy. I've had I have I've had quite a few discussions with him over the last uh, I guess four or five months. So this has been something that we've been planning for a while, and I'm just going to share that video with you guys really quickly, and you guys can see what we're doing. Here we go. Hey everyone, John here, and we are super excited about our Carica Stitch, and I wanted to do a little test drive on my neighbor because he loves his dog so much, words can't even express it. So I'm gonna give him a little gift, and let's see what his reaction is when I give it to him. So this is my neighbor, Frankie. Frankie, you wanna Hola. see what I did here for you? Oh my God! I... <laughs> is that cool or what? It's nice. <laughs> I love it. Because he loves his Roxy. There's oh Roxy Girl down there. Oh but it looks God. looks just like you guys, doesn't it? Thank you. No problem, man. Thank you. That's it. No problem, man. <laughs> well, I, I think it was a hit, guys. <laughs> Thank you, John. No problem, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little surprise for you. <laughs> That's real good. This is awesome. He's going to be so excited. Okay, you ready to see? Mm -hmm. Flip him over. <laughs> Who's that? See it, Eli. Let me see. <laughs> cool. You might want to see yours. Okay. That one's Eli, and this one's me. <laughs> Professional illustrations done by artist Daryl Stevenson and professional digitizing done by John Deere, the new Embroidery Legacy Carica Stitch is guaranteed to impress. Anyways, guys, that is the new Carica Stitch. I, I hope you kind of uh, got a kick out of this. I hope the wheels are turning because this is uh, so much fun. And I really do hope that as you get some of these done, you will share your photos and some of your reactions from loved ones because that's been uh, the, real, the real key. Jennifer, anything else? Thanks to Rhonda and... Rita? Rita? Yeah, yeah Rhonda you. and Rita. We, we really appreciate... I was uh, just saying Rita and Rhonda, and I was like, oh... Uh, which, which direction, <laughs> but uh, they, they are awesome, and we do really appreciate the people from uh, Schmetz Needles. They did do a beautiful uh, write-up for our family, The Deer's Legacy, this last month, so check that out on their site, and I don't know if we have a link up or not, but it is kind of pretty cool, so... Okay. And that is it. Well, thank you very much for tuning in, guys. We hope that you enjoyed the Carica Stitch, and uh, we need a tagline. What are we, what's our tag? Keeping you in stitches or? Maybe somebody's got a yeah, tagline maybe, for send, us. Send us ideas. We need a tagline for this. But and we want to see your stitch outs. Yeah, we want to see your stitch outs. So God bless, guys. We'll talk to you soon.